what is the relationship between waiting and hoping? Good morning, my name is Father Frank Buckley, and I am the host of our morning meditation group, challenging during times of uncertainty. Delighted you are all with us today. Today is going to be a great day. As we usually do, we will begin the morning with a little inspiration, followed by our 20-minute contemplative silent meditation practice, and concluded with a little Jesuit examine at the end of the day, just noticing where in our contemplative community, in our own personal lives, God has come alive for us. So, as we begin this morning, I would like to use for inspiration uh, one of my uh, real heroes, Father William Lynch, a Jesuit who wrote a beautiful book called Images of Hope. And this morning, I'd like to share with you, precisely because I need to hear it myself, the relationship between waiting and hoping. So let's begin. There is a strong bond, almost to the point of identity, between waiting and hoping. When waiting is a true power, when it is neither apathy nor despair, nor panic nor willfulness, it is ready to spring if a possibility appears or an exit opens. Let me read that again. When waiting is a true power, when it is neither apathy nor despair, nor panic, nor willfulness, it is ready to spring if a possibility appears or an exit opens. At times, in full control, it is simply enjoying the luxury of choosing among alternatives. Shall I go swimming or go to the opera? Allowing, allowing itself the sweet taste, without hurry, of being in command of itself and its world. Now at other times, full of pain, nearly overwhelmed by impossibility, it may choose, for no reason at all, to live rather than to die. That is, it may choose nothing left itself. It may choose to wait. This is the greatest victory of all the sick, one without which everything else is impossible. To choose in the moment of the impossible, to live and not to die, may very well be for the mentally ill that extraordinary moment where the difference between wishing and willfulness breaks down at last to their relief. They have defied reason many of them, all their lives. They have suffered through endless compulsive periods of a willfulness that was beyond even their control. Now, let them be willful enough to wait beyond all reason and to defeat illness by its own weapons. This waiting we are talking about is positive and creative. It makes real wishing possible. When properly understood and exercised, 
It means the ability to remain fixed upon a goal, to cope with obstacles, to make detours when an immediate path is blocked, to be willing to take all the intermediate means that are essential to attaining to the attaining of the goal. It means the ability to handle other wishes so that they do not impede the realization of the sensual wish. Thank you, Father William Lynch. A beautiful reflection on the correlation, the relationship between wishing and hoping. What a beautiful segue into our contemplative practice, the miracle of meditation, to just drop down and experience the presence of God in our everyday, ordinary, humdrum life. Let's begin. So first, I invite you to just settle in, to unplug. I have the bell, which I will keep track of the time and ring to begin, followed by a little guided meditation, followed by just dropping down into the miracle of the present moment and be still. So meditation should be three things, Father Thomas Keating tells us. It should be effortless, it should be calm, it should be relaxing. So I will set the timer for 20 minutes. Let's go ahead and begin. Find a comfortable position. The method is we just sit down on our chair or our cushion. I invite you to lower the eyes or three quarters closed, just something that feels safe to you. Take the attention to the breath. God is as close to us really as this air that we breathe. And as always, we'll begin with three diaphragmatic breaths that is breathing deeply as possible into the lower belly three times, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Together as a community around LA, around the country, around the world, we will do this together. Deep inhale. Open mouth, exhale. Beautiful. Two more times. Inhale. And exhale. Bringing fresh oxygen to the brain and the body. Last time, inhale. And exhale. Wonderful. Continue to breathe on your own taking the attention to the body. As always, we start with the feet. We feel the feet pressed on to the green earth, our mother. And we just notice any sensations in the soles of our feet as they rest upon the earth. We just begin by grounding. Moving up the body, we arrive at the chair, providing support or the cushion. And we simply notice where we felt support recently. Conversation with a friend, seeing something of beauty, and now just lean into that support 
a little bit. <clears throat> Relax the shoulders. If anything's been weighing you down or holding you down, just let it slide off the shoulders and let the earth receive it. Moving towards the front of the body, we arrive at the heart, the place the spiritual world touches the physical world. And we just place our hands on our heart. Let's see if we can come up with something in our life that brings us a little joy. And just name it in one word. Gently, gently, gently place that word towards the back of your heart. And as a contemplative community together, let's breathe one time into that joy. Inhale. And exhale, release the hands. And just notice what you feel. Finally, we arrive at the forehead, the area between the eyebrows, the seat of intuition, and we focus on an intention for our morning practice. St. Ignatius would say, ask the Lord for what we most deeply desire. Not being afraid to ask God for something great and beautiful this morning. And we seal that intention with an inhale and an exhale. We take the attention to the breath. We engage our sacred word. Repeat it four or five times. Drop down to the ocean floor and enjoy a little deep breath. Please continue.
we just have about a minute left, so for the, we just have about a minute left, so for this last minute, let's just, in the space of waiting, sprinkle a little joy over our lives and the world. Please continue. Gently bring your attention back to the room. If your eyes were closed, go ahead, open the eyes, circle the wrists one way, then the other. Shake out anything you've been holding on to and just re-engage. And we'll move into our Ignatian Jesuit examine, where we look back over our lives recently and just notice where God has been moving and alive. Uh, pretty easy for me to do today. Uh, I will start with, I love William Lynch. If you've never read him, pick him up. Uh, it's such a beautiful, uh, my book is so old, it was under a air conditioner and some water has leaked on it, so it's almost hard to read some of the pages, but what I read you was uh, legible and readable, and it seems like where the Spirit wanted us to be this morning. But this movement between hope and waiting. And I will tell you, I'm much more of a doer than a waiter. So it was really helpful to look at this quality of waiting, and that when we do wait, when we do hope, we began to live in this miraculous world full of possibility. It's almost too good to be true. And there's something about a little bit of a movement. Do we live in a world of scarcity where I need to get my share and hold on to it? Or when we're able to wait, when we're able to hope, do we live in this world full of possibility in which God can do absolutely everything and anything? And from my own experience, contemplative prayer moves us into this world, as Father Keating says so beautifully in his book. So that was one thing. I loved the little inspiration. Second thing uh, where I noticed God come alive was uh, the ordinations. Um, I don't know if for some of you in other countries, you may not know, but California, good for Governor Newsom. He put a tightening up everything, trying to keep the virus, the COVID-19, from spiking any more than it already has, which meant that he uh, closed the churches which also meant we were supposed to do ordinations at Blessed Sacrament yesterday, and we were not able to do them. But uh, kudos to kudos to uh, Father Scott Santa Rosa, our provincial. He, with uh, Archbishop Gomez, had the, uh, and definitely the movement of the Holy Spirit. Ordinations moved to Dolores Mission, into their plaza, and Scott sent a beautiful uh, email to all of us saying that these men would take, would the ordination would happen and when they would prostrate themselves on the ground to be of service to the church and the world, they would be on the ground where the homeless men at Dolores Mission sleep at night. This movement, this preferential option, for the poor. And my own prayer was that this symbol, this image of our newly ordained on the ground where the homeless sleep, 
will continue to inspire us, as we heard from Father Arupe yesterday, to move towards this preferential option for the poor in our communities and in the world. So that was really um, amazing to get to uh, two of our Jesuits ordained yesterday in the middle of a pandemic. Many, much gratitude to everyone who made that possible. And then last but not least, I got an email yesterday from Brother Henry Perez showing us uh, the food pantry and how it has taken off. He had pictures of the volunteers. He had uh, photographs of the ice wa iced water that was given out the delicious pizza Jennifer Challa brought, uh, the rainbow posters all over Hollywood telling people about free food at Blessed Sacrament on Saturday mornings and Tuesday afternoons. Uh, it was really, really amazing. So uh, big applause to Brother Henry and the volunteers and uh, everyone on the Jesuit campus at Blessed Sacrament who has made this possible, who continues to imagine how to feed the people who are so hungry in Hollywood at this moment. So I invite you also, uh, there are comments, please feel free. One of the things, one of our priorities in this meditation group is to build community, to end isolation. And one of the ways we can do that is to just put in the uh, comment section your own little examine experience of where God has come alive for you recently. God bless you. Have a beautiful Thursday, and I can't wait to see you on Friday.